This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. With our bowling alley now complete with its materials and lighting, we can now concentrate on keyframing in some action. I'll be using a file named Bowling Alley Animation, which you'll find in the Working Files folder. Since lighting the scene, I've made a few minor adjustments that I want to make sure to mention. A few of the Not In Play Scene objects have been frozen to make my selection a little easier. As for the number of pins in the scene, I've reduced the count down to three, positioning the pins to make it look like our first shot of the frame left us with a nasty split that we'll now attempt to pick up. The movement of the bowling ball down the alley will be accomplished by way of constraining the ball to a path. That path, drawn as a line in the top view, was started back at where the ball will be released and ends on the other side of the pins. I've also added a camera into the mix, simply by leaving the perspective view as it was layout-wise and typing Ctrl-C on the keyboard. That's the keyboard shortcut for Create Camera from View, which can be found in the View's pull-down menu. And lastly, I've turned the sign off above the alley, simply by changing its color back to black and lowering its self-illumination to zero. Okay, that's pretty much our setup. Let's see what we can do. First up, we'll get the bowling ball rolling down the alley. We'll do that by assigning a path constraint controller to the ball, having it then follow the green line down to the other side where the pins are located. In our viewport, let's select the bowling ball, then in the command panel, we'll open up the Motion tab. At the top of the controls, we'll then open the Assigned Controller section. In the list, we'll select the entry named Position, then click on the Assigned Controller icon just up and to the left of that. From the list, let's now choose a Path Constraint Controller. We can do that by simply double-clicking on its name. Back on the right, we'll drop down to the Path Parameters category, click on Add Path, then select the green line in any one of our viewports. Once we've done that, we'll go back to the right-hand column, turning off the Add Path command. Let's now play back our camera view, and we'll see whether we have the ball going down the path. With the ball now moving forward, we'll also want to make sure that it spins along the way. Let's turn on the Auto key and head to frame 100. You can always activate the keyframing command by using the N shortcut key on your keyboard. OK, working in the top view, I'll activate the Rotate command, then turn on the Angle Snap by typing A. I could also simply click on its icon on the toolbar while I'm up in that area. Using the local coordinate system, at frame 100, let's now rotate the ball a positive 1,080 degrees. That'll give us three full turns on the ball. Now the number of degrees you rotate doesn't have to be exact, so anything close to that number of degrees will work just fine. Once we've done that, we'll turn off Auto Key and take our camera view full screen using Alt-W. Let's now return to Select Mode by typing Q, and we'll play back our timeline. Now, as to the way the ball is rotating, we're going to want to tighten up the key that we created so the spin stays constant. Right now, Max has keyed in more of an easing in and easing out of both the starting and stopping positions. To make that change, here's what we'll do. Down on the timeline, we'll select the key at 100. We can do that simply by clicking on it. It'll turn white when it's selected. With our mouse then on the key, we'll right-click. From the menu that pops open, we'll choose the Y rotation. This is the direction that we spun the ball. In the Key Info dialog, in the top left corner, you'll notice we're on the second keyframe. That key being at frame 100, having spun the ball a little over 1000 degrees. What we're going to want to do is tighten up the rotation key as it enters into this frame. To do that, we'll click and hold down on the icon on the lower left-hand side, right below the name N. From the icons that pop up, we'll choose the second one down, giving us a linear tangency. We'll also want to do the same thing on the outside of the first key. To get there, in the key info, upper left-hand corner, click on the left-hand pointing arrow. Then, down at the bottom, open up the outside of the key, changing its tangency again to linear. 
what we've done will basically have the ball's rotation maintain a constant spin, no longer slowly exiting the first keyframe and slowly entering the last. Let's close the dialog and play back the timeline again. As you can see, now we've got a more constant spin to our ball. OK, now let's get to knocking down a few pins. We'll first take our viewport configuration back to four windows. Again, you can do that simply using the Alt-W keyboard combo. What we'll need to do now is determine at what frame the ball hits the front pin on the right-hand side. If we use the period and comma keys in the keyboard, we can slide the ball one frame at a time. Moving through frames as necessary, locate the frame at which the ball makes contact with the front pin. On my timeline, that looks to be at frame 88. This will be the frame at which we'll set a starting key for that first pin. Let's do this. We'll select the pin that's in contact with the ball, then activate the Move command. That pin name is pin 1. With us now in position to do some keyframing, down on the timeline, let's activate the Set key. You can do that by either clicking on the button or using the apostrophe keyboard shortcut. With Set Key On, let's now create a keyframe. That's accomplished by tapping on the icon directly to the left of Set Key, or by simply typing the K key on your keyboard. Now once you've done that, verify that we have a newly created key down on the timeline at frame 88. Let's have the pin take 9 frames to slide over to the left hand side in the hopes of knocking down the other pin. What we're going to want to do is to slide the selected pin in line with the one on the left setting it in its stopping or here's where I made it to position. Now with our keyframe set at frame 88, and saying that we want 9 frames for the movement to complete, that would take us to frame 97. On the timeline, let's move to that position. In the top view, let's now slide the selected pin past the one it's going to knock over, having it end up resting in the gutter. Once we have it there, let's activate the Rotate command and rotate it flat with the floor. That'll be an even 90 degrees. We might also want a little extra action on the pen, so why don't we rotate it in a counterclockwise fashion. If we now take our attention to the front view, you'll notice the pen we're working on is still resting above the alley itself. In the front view, let's activate the Move command, moving it down into the gutter. Once we have it in position, we can type K to set a key. OK, now scrubbing the timeline, we should now have a starting and ending position for our selected pin. Let's see if that's the case. Staying focused on the front view, you'll notice though that in between the two keys that we've set, the pin seems to be digging itself into the alley. What we'll have to do is to set a couple extra keys in between the two that we've already created. Now to do that, using the comma and period keys in the keyboard, I'll move myself to a frame where the pin will need to be moved up onto the alley. When in position, I'll make the necessary transformation, then set another key. Now, this doesn't have to be perfect. The way things are going to be moving around so fast, we won't be able to tell if things aren't exact. Set whatever keys are necessary so you're happy with the end result. When working, make sure to check all your viewports to verify that things are indeed in the proper place. OK, with the first pin now taken care of, let's concentrate on the one on the left. Using the period and comma keys as necessary, let's verify the frame at which the first pin hits the other. Now, contact with my example seems to be somewhere between 92 and 93. I'm going to go to frame 92, select that pin, and set a key. This will be at the frame at which the key on the left begins to make it slide as it's being knocked over. Now, if we want to stay with our 9 frame movement, we're going to need to add a few more frames onto our timeline. A fast and easy way to do that would be to hold down the Control and Alt keys in your keyboard and the right mouse button. Positioning my mouse on the right hand side of the timeline, I'll now simply pull things a little farther to the left. This will expand the timeline. Let's give it, let's say, 120 frames. OK, back to our pin. Now the first key was set at 92. Adding 9 frames to that, I'll now go to frame 101. This will be the frame at which our selected pin has been knocked over and is in a resting position. Let's do what's necessary in our viewports to make that happen. In the top view, I'll move the pin back and lay it on its side. 
I'll also spin it around a bit to add a little extra action as it's being knocked down. Once the rotating is done, I'll focus in on the front view, lowering the pin down to the alley. If I then need to tilt it a tad so the top of the pin is resting on the alley itself, I'll do what's necessary. Once I have things in position, I'll go ahead and set a key. Now the same thing with this pin, we'll probably now have to go in between the two keys that have been set, setting additional keys so the pin doesn't fall through the alley. Do what's necessary to make the action on the pen look realistic. Okay, with that in place, let's now go in for our third and final pen. Question is, when does the ball make contact with that object? On my timeline, that looks to take place right around frame 94. I'll select that third pen and set a key. Staying with the idea of using nine frames in between, let's take 94 plus 9 up to 103. It'll be here where the pin has been knocked down and into its final resting position. Let's go ahead and move it and rotate it as necessary. Once you have it where it's going to end up, go ahead and set your keyframe. Like with the others, let's now do what's necessary in between the two keys to make sure the pen doesn't fall through the alley. Keep scrubbing through your timeline, getting the pins in position until you're happy with the results. OK, let's turn off our set key, we'll take our camera view full screen, and we'll play things back. Now that we've converted our spare, let's move into the next video where we'll start working on the sign.